Police! Stay there, Brett. Stay there, mate. Stay where you are. Police. Stay where you are. Stay where you are. Police. Stay where you are. Brett Cowan, Steve Blanchard, Detective Senior Sergeant from the Homicide Unit in Brisbane, and you know Ross Hutton, is that correct? From the Sunshine Coast CLB. No, I don't know him. You don't know him? No. Okay. Brett, we're here to, uh, we're investigating the abduction and murder of Daniel Morecambe. Yep. Okay. You're aware that uh, you've been spoken to before in relation to that? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. What I have to tell you is that you don't have to speak to us today, okay? Yep. You have the right to remain silent. Yep. You don't have to say, answer any question or make any statement. Yep. Do you understand that? Yep. Just to, just to tell them um, that I'm under arrest, am I? Uh, not at this time. If you're happy to remain with us and speak with us in relation to this matter. No, you just can arrest me. All right, you're under the arrest for the murder of Daniel Morecambe. Yep, cool. I'm under arrest for Daniel's mur Daniel Morecambe's murder. Explain to you, um, we're currently investigating the disappearance of a young boy called Daniel Morecambe. He was abducted from the side of the Nanville Connection Road on the 7th of the 12th, 2003. All right, did you see a young boy standing under the Kill Mountain Road overpass? I didn't see anybody standing there. Right. Did you see any cars or did you notice anything unusual? No. So if you left at 2.30, if you left at 1.30, Two, three, I'm at three. Two, three. Right. Okay, and when you've previously spoken, you've consented to having your car examined and to getting DNA and that yeah. sort of thing. At this time, um, we're talking about December 2003, you're involved with the church up there, is that right? No. No? I was going to the church there, but I hadn't been going for quite a while. Which church are you talking about? Christian Heritage Center. Is that the one behind the Kill Mountain Road over past it? So you didn't go to church that day? No. Right. Um, I think Tracy might have gone in the morning. Right. That's your ex wife? Yeah, no, I don't think she did actually. Right. right. We've conducted analysis on that phone. Yep. Um, there was a phone call made uh, at 8.51 in the morning yep. to a fellow called Andrew Stevens. Do you know him? Yes. I think. You're not 100% on that. That was at 8.51 in the morning. Yeah. Not sure. Not sure? Right. The next call was made at 12.50, which is yeah. 10 to 1, yeah. where you call Frank Davis. Yep. Yeah. Right, so that's 10 to 1. 10 to 1, yeah. Right, so that's prompted you, like, do you know, did, just can you tell me, did you call him? Then did you go straight away? Or more or less. So it's probably about what, one away. o'clock that year when you left home. Yeah. It was 10 minutes. Yeah. And there's one at uh, 10 past, eight minutes past six, eight minutes past six that night to Clayton's time. Yes. Yeah. yeah? You were um, working for Clayton's at the time, were you? Yeah. So. Yeah. Do you know, did you have a mobile phone with you in the car as you were driving up to um, Frank's place? Kept a mobile phone with you. What's that number? Right, so you're saying, yeah, you were on the road at 1 o'clock? Yep. Right, so it's most likely you arrived home at 2.30, yeah? Yeah. An hour and a half, 90, we've worked out about 90 minute round trip by the time it took to talk to the people and pick it up. What happened when you got home? Um, just got straight into mulching up the trees. Mm hmm. Um, after I finished, cleaned up, had a shower and stayed home. I don't know. Did anyone help you do the mulching or anything? No, the next one I had was um, heard it. Yeah? It's a petrol one. Um, both next one I heard it. I think Eric, the landlord's son, might have come outside. Oh, okay. He actually came over later on when I was starting to finish up and was over there having a look at that. Oh, okay, so he came over and spoke to you afterwards. So you think thinking now you probably got home at 2.30? Yeah, around 2.30. Putting that you got home about 2.30, you would have been coming past the Kill Mountain Road overpass somewhere in the vicinity of five past two? Yeah, somewhere. Yeah? And you didn't see anything? No, there was nobody standing there. Did you see any buses in the area? I've that seen the broken down bus. Where was that at, do you remember? You saw the broken down bus at Wombai? Yeah, Wombai Turner. Was there any people at the bus or...? Yeah, there was people still on the bus. 
when you went past the first time, was that going up to them or coming back? Do you remember? I didn't notice it coming, like going up there. So coming back, you coming saw back a bus it, yeah. with people on it. When you say people on it, just one person or? Um, I think there was a couple of people on it. There might have been a couple of people standing off of it as well. Just the one bus? Yeah, there was only one bus there. Oh. Right, I. Is there anything else you can recall about that day that you saw or anything? What vehicle were you driving that day? The white Pajero. You still got that car? Yes, I did. And that's the one that was inspected by police on the round about the 22nd or something? It was the 25th. It was Christmas Day. Christmas Day, they but boy, it took your car. Yeah. Because I went down to my mum and dad's place on Boxing Day and I had to wash it and get all the fingerprint dust and everything else. Uh, right. So you're a little bit annoyed. Was it even a bit of a mess when you got it back? Yeah, well, they did a pretty good job of cleaning it, but there's still fingerprint dust all over the inside of it. Uh, did you volunteer your DNA or did the police up that were investigating ask you about your DNA? Um, the first two officers that came out and spoke to me at home asked if they could take photos and DNA. Yeah, and you had no objection to that? Yeah. Have you seen the conflicts that have been released in relation to this? Yeah. You've seen them on TV? Yeah. Do you think you look anything like those conflicts? Well, I saw one of them. <laughs> but, yeah. Has anyone that said anything to you? No, yeah. they yeah, actually, One of them actually looks more like my brother than looks like me. Oh, okay. Where's your brother live? Um, in Brisbane, just up past Everton Park. Oh, yeah. Our old brother. I think wasn't up the coast at the time, was he? No. Oh, anything else you want to come up? When, like, when we initially spoke to you, the, the times were all a bit, you know, you were saying it could have been this time, could have been that time. Yeah. You seem a bit more certain about time at the moment. Just with what you used to show me, like the phone calls and that. Right. But I knew I wasn't home any later than three o'clock. Is there anything that, that can tell us that? Like, is there any, anything at all that say, that you can say, well, I know I was, I was home by three because? Um, only that it doesn't take that, all that long to go up and back. Mm. If, if the suggestion was, and this is an inference, and mind you, people review what we do in relation to this job and, and come up with suggestions or, or possibilities. Yep. If the suggestion was that you weren't home till three, um, and let's face it, there's been a couple of, uh, I think Tracy says it was three o'clock, but she wasn't real sure, etc., etc. There's a bit of a gap in time that we're a little bit concerned, not concerned about, but a little bit interested to try and work out if we can narrow that time down a little bit yep. to A, protect, probably to give you um, your version more credibility, or secondly, from our point of view, um, to see if we can't, if, if there's something that says, well, hang on, Brett was home a bit later than that, and we know that because of this, yeah. all of a sudden we've got a bit of a problem with our times. Do you understand why yeah. you're, inter you're of interest to us? Yeah. Um, is there anything at all that you can you can tell us? I mean, anything I can say is what I said last, like back in the other interviews, is the traffic cameras that are around, like the one in B, were and everything. That's mm. that's it. So anyway, I'd be able to we have a number of a number of our witnesses. We've got quite a few people that have, that saw Daniel under the, the overpass yeah. and saw a vehicle parked nearby and some people talking to him. Your the time that you've gone past, we indicate if you went past at, at say five past two. We have a number of witnesses that say that, that they saw those things there. You're, you're adamant that you didn't see anything there. I didn't see anybody or any cars or anything there. Not that I was aware of. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anything else you want to come up? How often would you go to the church? I hadn't been for quite a few months before that. But Did you feel comfortable going to the church? There's no reason why you wouldn't go there? or? Yeah. No. Then? Oh, then, yeah, no. I did go, like, I might have gone once. And you had a rally or something? Or? My only uncle pastors at the church. 
Oh. How often did you see them? Every Saturday and Sunday, or every Sunday that I was at church. Like before that, I'd go. To, I was going to church Saturday, Sunday morning and Sunday night. Right. Okay. And um, something was preached over the pulpit that I didn't agree with, and went and spoke to the pastor about it. He wouldn't change his mind. And that's your uncle? No, a no, different one. He's my uncle's and only the. Well, they're the head pastors, but they're under the pastors that do the preaching off the stage on Sunday. Okay. Right. And what were the times for the church services? Nine in the morning and six at night. I think it was. Is there another one at lunchtime? No. Not one at eleven o'clock. Okay. Just a lot of people, as Mark said, and if you sat on your left tongue at one, you'd have been driving past that overpass at about two o'clock. No. If you left home at one, one, you're down at the place at 20 to 2. Wouldn't you're the next time there 10 yeah, minutes, yeah, at 10 yeah, to 2 yeah. you leave that place, you'd be going at that home past 2, 5 past 2. That's when all the activity is happening, you know, that's yeah. when Daniel was there. All of our witnesses are in that period and they all say that there's there's a bit of activity under that. You know what I mean? And we, what, we, what I'm interested to know is you nominated yourself, you, you, you contacted us and said, I was, well, Told the coppers that you went went through under that time. I didn't contact you. So you Sorry, the coppers come to you and said, and you know, said that yeah. there was you nominated that you were there. Yeah. And in that period of time is is the is the money time for us because someone has taken that child yeah. in that time and got you in the area. We're not. The problem with us is this is not going anywhere. We can't. Go, we can't write this off and say, well, there's definitely not Brett Cowan, to a point, because um, until we can get our, our times right or, or something extra that's going to say, well, this is why he was named at 2.30. Because the best we can get from Tracy is she believed it was about three, yeah. which gives us at least half an hour, that anything could happen within a half an hour. And... Uh, we don't have. We only have your word to say that, that that you went a certain way home. You went this way home, and that was the time, etc. You, you see what I'm see what we're getting at? Well, that's what I was saying about um, the traffic cameras and everything. Mm. Uh, when you say traffic cameras, what, which one? Which one? You've got the one at the airport turn off, or going up. The mine's with the traffic flow. Yeah. yeah. Um, you got the one down Cloundra. You've got the one past Cloundra turn off, and you got one in Beaver. Mm. I'll go past them all. That's the only way I can... Did you get fuel that day? No. Where were you purchasing your fuel at that time? Near more petroleum. Did you ever get fuel out on weekends? Yep. Quite often. Mm. And it, most of the time I'd go to the Nambour depot, but otherwise it could be Richard or Cloundra. Mm -hmm. And what's that entail? You, you, you just swipe the car, car. Yeah. Get, it, get it monthly. Yeah. Did you, did you have any bank accounts around that time? No, Tracy had all bank accounts. Oh, I might have had a Suncorp account. And who's not? My name. Only for the sole purpose of my wages to be put into by Trevor. Can I come? So we know, look, the only thing that clarifies in your mind what time you left home is these phone calls, yeah? yeah. Like at 10 to 1, you've run up, yeah. Davis, and then you say you left virtually straight away. And then obviously, um, when you make the call from at 12.58, uh, which is like two minutes to one, you called from a mobile to your landline, which means you're probably mobile in the car at that time, yeah. leaving at one. <laughs> no, so we've basically got you leaving home before one o'clock, five to one or something. Yeah. Do you, you, now that I've told you that you've called Tracy at home, do you remember what the conversation was? Like, did you have to stop at a shop? Did she say, can you get something? Did you ring her and say, do you want something? I can't remember. You didn't stop at any shops? No. You didn't see anyone you knew driving down the road? No. What was the nature of the conversation you had with the person you picked the mulcher up from? Were they staying home? Were they going out? No, they were going, yeah. Alright, okay. so you weren't there very long, were you? No. I don't want to be closer, but at least with Clara Fogg, he's probably on the road by five to one. Mm. And he's definitely home by three. Do you carry your mobile in the yard? Yes. So you would have it on your... Yes. What, how many phone, how many numbers would you have in your, in your quick dial thing? 
10, because it's all online. Not that many. I've got, I had shitloads of phone numbers on my phone. But Back at that time? Yeah, but only nine on speed dial. This was the, uh, there was only one call recorded on the phone that day. Yeah, but I'm just... Like his mind, there was only one call. I'm just thinking it was bumped. Yeah. Are you still in the yard at one o'clock? But you'd have it locked, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. the thing not locked or physically starting. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Anything else you'd like to say about it, Brent? No. no worries. You took part in this interview of your own free will? Yes, I did. And what you told me here today being the truth? Yes, it has. If you had have abducted Daniel, would you tell me? Probably not. All right. No worries. We'll terminate the interview. For the first time tonight, we can show you chilling video of an alleged confession from the man accused of murdering schoolboy Daniel Morecambe. It was recorded in an undercover operation in Perth's Hyatt Hotel. August 2011 in a Perth hotel room. Months of complex undercover police work is about to come to a dramatic conclusion. Brett Peter Cowan, also known as Shadow Nanya Hunter, sits down for a meeting with Arnold, who he thinks is the head of a criminal gang. He's actually an undercover policeman. He says he's received an email from a source. Arnold, um, Shadow Hunter, alias Brett Peter Cowan, the main suspect in us disappearance of Daniel Mork when we went missing in Queensland 7 December 2003. He tells Cowan if he can't sort this out, he'll be dropped from the gang and an upcoming big job that could earn him lots of money. Honesty, trust, respect, all right? Then comes the startling confession. Yeah, OK. No. Yeah, I do. All right, so, OK, so you hear it, but what I'm saying is... You know, I, I, I need to kind of go, I need to stick you right back to the whole thing. Cowan describes that day when he left home to pick up a mulcher. He says he saw Daniel on the side of the road and parked his car in a nearby church car park. Uh, I've walked in, I've sat there and then the bus drove past and that's when I said I'm going down to the shopping centre, do you want a lift? Yep. And he's gone, yep. Cowan says instead of taking him to the shopping centre, he took him to a house in Biwa. He never got to molest him or anything like that. He panicked and I panicked and grabbed him around the throat and just thought I knew what he was dead. All right, how long did it take for you to, str to strangle him out, do you know? It didn't seem long. He then tells a policeman about putting Daniel's body in the back of his car, driving 150 metres to an old sand mining site. In the video, Cowan claims he went back to the site around a week later with a shovel that says there was no body. He could only find a piece of bone. He says he broke it up with the shovel and buried it. 